हेलो मेकैनिज्म फॉर रेजिस्टेंस टू एंटीबायोटिक्स सर्वाइवल ऑफ फिटेस्ट एज वी नो द डाविन्स लॉ सेज दैट द ऑर्गेनिज्म दैट आर लीस्ट अडाप्टेड टू द एनवायरमेंट और द चेंजेस इन द एनवायरमेंट विल डाय आउट एंड द ऑर्गेनिज्म दैट इवॉल्व एंड अडाप्ट टू देयर एनवायरमेंट विच इज सेंसिटिव टू देयर एनवायरमेंट विल कीप ऑन लिविंग this is called as the natural selection which plays a major role in evaluation as stated by darwin's law and the same principle is followed for development of resistance to antibiotic which changes or adapts against the environment that is chemicals exposed in the form of antibiotics the mechanism of resistance to antibiotics can be of three type that is natural adaptation or gene transfer some bacteria because of their structure and function have natural resistance against antibiotics while few of them develops or adapts to the changes present in the surrounding that is in the chemical form that is of antibiotics another form of resistance is the acquisition of resistance to antibiotics through gene transfer adaptation is of three type that is mutation efflux inactivation whereas acquisition may be conjugation transformation and transduction now the antibiotics to which the bacteria are having natural resistance may be exemplified through penicillin that is gram negative bacteria is naturally resistance to penicillin because they have an extra outer membrane layer which is absent in the gram positive bacteria as we can see here that the cell membrane of gram positive bacteria have membrane protein followed by perisplasmic space and to the upper side it have peptidoglycan layer whereas in case of gram negative bacteria you can clearly see that apart from these three layers that is from cell membrane upon which there is a periplasmic space upon which there is a peptidoglycan layer on the uppermost side to that it have extra outer membrane layer which retracts the entry of penicillin or another antibiotics right so gram negative bacteria have a unique outer membrane because of which it excludes the penetration of antibiotics or another or another chemical into the cell this is how the natural few bacteria are having natural resistance to antibiotics now another one is adaptation bacteria adapts the resistance by following three mechanism that is mutation inactivation and efflux the first one that is mutation in mutation bacteria expresses the genes there is genes expression of what we can say resistance gene now this mutation of gene result in altered protein formation right the gene is genes have got mutated which will result in altered protein formation now this protein is a target protein where the antibiotics go and attaches with that protein and thereby it shows further modification or cell death or bacterial cell death now the modification or mutation leads to altered target to which antibiotic have decreased affinity right and this decreased affinity result in no effect or there will be resistance of resistance against that particular antibiotic example is quinolone tetracycline penicillin right penicillin since we have seen the same example here before also in the last slide that is natural uh, we can say resistance so one antibiotic can develop in resistance in more or by one or more than one mechanisms now another one is inactivation in this inactivation which is another form of adaptation bacteria develops the antibiotic resistance gene which expresses the protein which serves as antibiotic degrading or antibiotic modifying enzyme again we can take the example of beta lactam over here or chloramphenicol we will take example of chloramphenicol now when this chloramphenicol when the bacteria develops a resistance against chloramphenicol it causes the acetylation of chloramphenicol which is a amino glycoside and this acetylated chloramphenicol have least affinity for its target have no effect or it cannot have the bactericidal effect right 
so this is another example of adaptation that is through inactivation of antibiotic or modification of structure of antibiotic next one is efflux which is the third form of adaptation in this bacteria expresses an antibiotic resistance gene which develops the antibiotic efflux pumps now this antibiotic efflux pumps serves as the pumps which efflux out the antibiotic which is which have got accumulated inside the cell now in normal case where the antibiotic efflux pumps are not present in that antibiotics easily get accumulated inside the cell and it shows its effect either by causing protein synthesis inhibition or by another mechanism through which it causes the bacterial cell death but after generation of antibiotic resistance genes which expresses antibiotic efflux pump the antibiotic which have got entered into the cell abruptly goes got effluxed out and therefore there is a less accumulation and therefore this particular cell will show resistance against that particular antibiotic example is of fluorum phenicol and beta lactam again now next one is gene transfer or acquisition now this kind of resistance is acquired from the same bacterial species or from maybe from another bacterial species there are basically the three mechanisms of gene transfer method which is also called as a horizontal gene transfer there are two types of gene transfer methods in the bacteria that is horizontal gene transfer method and the vertical gene transfer method in vertical gene transfer method it happens through the replication of bacteria right now we will focus on the resistance based gene transfer or the gene transfer method through which resistance is acquired there are three methods that is first one is conjugation second one is transduction and third one is transformation in conjugation method there is a formation of pilus between the two bacterias one first bacteria which is having the resistance or which is having what we can say resistance gene another bacteria is not having resistance gene in its plasmid right after formation of pilus the resistance gene having plasmid will get will move or will get transferred from the resistance bacteria into the non resistance bacteria where it gets combined into it get combined with the plasmid of that bacteria and when that bacteria will replicate it will have that resistance gene so this is the first one that is conjugation that is formation of bridge between the two bacteria and transformation of resistance gene from one plasmid to another plasmid now second one is transduction second one here is a transduction now in this transduction there is the transformation of resistance gene by the aid of bacteriophage now in by this aid of bacteriophage bacterium is first getting infected with the viruses right now resistance gene from plasmid will get entered or incorporated into that particular virus then this virus will move out it will infect another bacterial cells now there can be two process right that is in that particular bacteria which have got infected by this bacteriophage there that resistance gene will get transferred into their chromosome or into their dna or into their plasmid or that bacteriophage will replicate into the host cell and thereby it will cause after after replication it will cause lysis of that cell and it will infect more number of bacterial cell now these bacteria will now transfer the resistance gene to another bacteria which is called as transduction where the infected or resistance gene was transferred by the aid of virus which is called as a bacteriophage third method of gene transfer horizontal gene transfer is transformation in this the dead bacterium which is having resistance gene gets fragmented or its lysis and then this resistance gene get transferred into the alive bacteria right in this there is no vector there used or no vector is being applied for transformation of resistance gene from dead bacterium to alive bacterium right so in this way there are three methods of horizontal gene transfer that is conjugation transduction and transformation which finally transfers 
the resistance gene and thereby transfers the resistance into bacteria. Another way of gene transfer we have already discussed is vertical that is through replication. So it is not the strongest of species that survive but one that is most responsive to change. Thank you.